Time to bring in Jim Lynch uh, and cover your assets. Jim is an independent voice on Wall Street, the economy, sports, politics, uh, many, 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 many years uh, of experience in those subjects and more. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Marshall. How are you doing? I'm doing great. The Giants, uh, you know, started off 0-3. Their last six games, they're 3-3, and so they're 3-6. and And you know what? I'm feeling a little better about them. <laughs> Not totally there, but I'm feeling a little bit better about them. Okay. I'm certain you remember when they were down, I think, um, 0-3. Yeah, well, I hope that they had a, a much better team. And you anticipated this to a degree. Yeah. I didn't realize you were anticipating so much, so they really have come back beautifully. I was anticipating uh, eight wins this season. Not a lot, but eight wins. But you know what? For the past six years, the Giants have started off either 0-3 or 0-5. Oh. That's a tough way to start yeah. off a season. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, I want to I want to switch very quickly uh, to uh, to what's going on uh, in the business world, uh, the stock market, uh, and more because there's some there's some pretty big uh, pretty big news stories and uh, and one of them uh, is uh, first of all GE uh, General Electric um, they are now uh, breaking into three different companies uh, aviation, healthcare, and energy. Um, I guess what is what what I, what spurred this uh, maybe is that over the past twenty years, uh, really GE has not performed as well as expected on the stock market. It has not, and I think this is a wise move because they're going to be concentrating uh, with staff and resources um, in three different areas but at the same time maintaining the company. I think it's very important in terms of the healthcare situation, which has got tremendous growth ahead of it, but also in the energy area, um, depending on what they develop. For instance, if they do clean, uh, clean energy, like solar, uh, then, then that'll be a growth business again uh, uh, versus the oil industry generally, which is, doing fine, but eventually we're going to have to cut back on the use of oil because of the um, pollution. So I think it's a wise move, and uh, hopefully this will be a good beginning for them because they have really they've been laggard, it seems, forever. Whereas 50 years ago, not that I was uh, watching, <laughs> huh. uh, they were a bellwether. So it's nice to see them taking some concrete steps. Well, you know, it's 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 interesting to see such a big company. I mean, you think of GE; it's one of those companies that you just think is uh, uh, it's uh, indestructible. Uh, you know, another thing is, and I just I don't get it, and I know I probably should get it, but I don't get it. Uh, Bitcoin, of course, is now at an all-time high, sixty-eight thousand uh, dollars. I see more and more uh, commercials uh, on TV uh, promoting Bitcoin. You know. It's an unregulated form of, of, of currency, and I, I, you know what? I just don't get it. I don't get it either. There's, uh, and I think uh, we had somewhat of a similar conversation some time ago where I used the word lack of regulation that you just did. Um, the stock market has a regulator, uh, the SEC, so that if something on toward happens, they can address that, and they can address the firms that have uh, done some things which are not appropriate. Bitcoin, uh, you don't have that. Um, and uh, the, 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 the SEC has talked about it, and they think they've solved the problem by allowing uh, ETFs to be formed, which uh, basically... Uh, by companies, not the Bitcoin, but companies that traffic in um, in in uh, in Bitcoin. So, um, I, I can only think of one thing, and I've never heard anybody explain this. Periodically, what happens in Bitcoin is they burn. They being the computer people who make the Bitcoin. They burn X amount of Bitcoin, which lowers them in circulation or possible circulation. 
that seems to be a form of manipulation in uh, in, in depreciating the amount of uh, Bitcoin around. I'll be honest with you, though, I don't really have a lot of conviction on that. Um, it just seems to me it's like a, a hall of mirrors, this situation. And uh, there's an incredible amount of uh, enthusiasm for it, particularly among younger people, uh, people uh, uh, like uh, the fellow who runs Telsa. Um, all kinds of people are, are very, very enthusiastic. I don't know where this is going to end. I don't think the Chinese, which are very important in terms of the uh, markets overall, nor, frankly, do I think the U.S. is going to basically uh, use Bitcoin as their currency. Uh, that said, what happens when interest rates start going up, uh, which normally means um, the dollar uh, can get better or it can get worse, depending on other circumstances? How does that Bitcoin handle that? Um, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of money in here, and big people have been coming in, and I must say, I'm just on the side of the road. I can't quite comprehend it, and uh, those who think they can uh, should take counsel with somebody who knows better than I how this thing works, uh, because you have to be very, very careful in something like this. All of a sudden, if, if the... Uh, the glow uh, comes off. Uh, you know, you're not talking ten, ten thousand dollars of Bitcoin. You're talking a lot more on the downside. So, buyer beware. All right, I'm going to give you a bit of good news here and show and show you that uh, entrepreneurship can work. Um, at the age of 12 years old, uh, a young African American kid, Trey Brown, uh, received about 178 dollars in birthday money. What did he do with it? He went out, bought, customized, and sold T-shirts. All his T-shirts sold out. Now, let's fast forward three years to this week. Uh, his company is now on pace to bring in, get this, $2.2 million in sales this year. $2.2 million in sales. He was on Shark Tank, which will be showed on Friday. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, one of the uh, one of the members uh, of that uh, invested invested in his company now, uh, and uh, and for twenty percent, uh, and uh, gave him three hundred thousand dollars for a twenty percent share uh, to help him expand his business more. That's just an amazing story, uh, and shows you that uh, what hard work and true entrepreneurship can can do. No question about it. The key is be smart, uh, be honest with your idea, uh, don't go overboard, uh, and basically ha get help uh, in, in a new idea with somebody who might not just have the finances, but might be able to uh, help you a bit in your managing uh, or your sales pitch or whatever. It's a marvelous story, a marvelous story. All right, and uh, let's go back to China. We, you mentioned China for just a second. Uh, the U.S. Central Bank uh, put out a, a warning yesterday that uh, the property problems in China really can elevate uh, the financial stresses in China, could further strain the global financial markets and negatively affect the world and the United States. They pointed to the what we've talked about before, Evergrande uh, indebted developer, uh, and uh, now um, they're warning, uh, you know, th we're, we're being warned that it could default on debts of more than, listen to this, $300 billion, and that would cascade and bring other Chinese developers into problems. Uh, they're one of the largest real estate developers in China, part of the Global 500. This is almost like the domino effect, Jim. There's no question about it. Um, and the Chinese, um, they really supported the housing industry as they did other industries, uh, much more so than the U.S. government ordains to support industries. But the Chinese did it because they were coming off um, a period of almost no growth back in the late 90s. And so these, the housing industry really 
uh, was a bellwether in helping to grow the economy. But here of late, actually in the last six to ten months, something like that, uh, the Chinese government has been deliberately trying to slow, to slow the housing situation down in the sense that they realize that they've let it get out of control in terms of the people uh, who will be speculating because they've offered them very good terms uh, to participate in the real estate business. Uh, we warned in this country that the number of things that we've seen, and you pointed this out, Zillow, uh, you know, if, if rates stay low or if the government is willing to supply all the money available, eventually, because people will try and use the money to speculate, eventually it comes to a poor end. And that's going on in China now. Now, China is huge, uh, uh, not just in resources, but huge in terms of discipline. So uh, I do think the crisis is ongoing, but I would caution us in, in just keeping your eye on it rather than saying, well, okay, it looks like it's going down the tubes, because it's not going to go down the tubes. It will be more a period of tremendous indigestion and lots of losses, no question about it. But China is uh, number two in the world, going on or trying to go on number one. Um, this brings us back to what you po pointed out, uh, Marshall, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, our own industry, where people have been uh, uh, kind of a special thing, they'd buy up uh, housing with the idea they'd, they'd resell it. Uh, and uh, we saw uh, a couple of companies now have started liquidating because they don't have the, the capital to keep going. Um, and, the, and, and, and the amount of people buying these homes is, has fallen down. Um, so, again, this comes back to interest rates being so low for so long. Uh, you have to realize that everybody and his brother uh, who's got a little business or an idea or a big corporation, uh, they just love these interest rates. So on the one hand, it's good, but on the other hand, it sometimes can create a very excessive speculative environment. Now, now explain this to me because you you know the stock market and you know my feelings about the stock market. I, uh, I, I you know I, I think that we file, once again have an administration uh, that doesn't uh, point to the stock market every day, but uh, the economy as a whole uh, and uh, and uh, Joe Biden's uh, leadership as a whole, the stock market, the Dow, the Nasdaq, the S and P are at all-time highs. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, is this a, a false indicator? Uh, what, 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 does this, what does this indicate? Uh, as, as our economy seems to be, it's struggling, but it's coming out of the melee as it was in the height of the pandemic. What, what does this mean where all these markets are, are climbing so high to record highs almost every day? Well, here's what it means to me. Um, and everybody will have their idea. Uh, first of all, the stock market uh, during Joe Biden's uh, first year is up over 30 percent. That is the largest increase since 1960, 1960, when President John F. Kennedy was the president. Um, we entered this pandemic where the market was roughly, uh, on the Dow Jones, 28,000 to 30,000. Uh, as the pandemic hit and our inability to deal with it quickly, uh, the Dow, using the Dow, went to 18,000. And what happened in that process, uh, stocks became relatively cheap at that level versus levels of past years, the past five, six years. Uh, then all of a sudden, the government came in and said, okay, well, we're, we're going to try and uh, get the pandemic under control. We'll also need to support the economy so that we have the revenues coming in to help pay uh, for everything under the sun, not just the vaccines, but welfare for people who are out of work or, or health care for people who were very sick. Uh, net result, you had a tremendous uh, influx of investments 
into the economy in that 18,000, 24,000 range. Uh, growth started moving up. People became more confident in it. And that's why they started buying more stocks. Now, as the pandemic has slowed down, uh, businesses during this period of time have really made a lot of money. Uh, again, some of it because interest rates were so low to availability of cash. So we've had a tremendous uh, rebirth in terms of confidence and earnings and a more forward-looking approach, uh, courtesy of the Biden administration, which basically now in its infrastructure uh, uh, legislation is basically putting, uh, there's not, not quite a ceiling at all anymore in terms they need to get this country going. And it's not just for us citizens to get the country going vis-a-vis the rest of the world. Uh, who are our competition in various ways, the Chinese being one of the main ones. And so a huge amount of confidence has been spawned by uh, this terrible pandemic and calamity. Now, will it last? Uh, We will see. Right now, I think the stock market is very fully valued in terms of uh, what what we've been through, the amount of money available, uh, the future, you know, nothing grows to the sky when it comes to uh, the stocks and bonds. So I would, I would say that de- very definitely, as I've been saying on the way up, well, people should uh, look at their portfolios, weak sisters out, profits in some, losses in others, kind of balance out. Don't get out of the stock market, but I think you really have to lower your exposure. Now, the bigger question you were asking, is this too much? Is this, uh, you know, I'll be very serious with you. Uh, We we really don't know. I don't really pretend to be too much of an expert in anything because I've been around too long and made too many mistakes uh, (laughs) to get that uh, confidence thing. Um, But we do have a country now that if we can only get ourselves together as a people and start uh, working on the same page, not politically, but as people, citizens of a great country, this thing could, we could really be in a a growth growth phase here that maybe we'll look back and say, wow, that was marvelous. But I really hesitate. When when I look at... uh, going on in the country here uh, where a lot of people are very crazy and very violent and uh, some of them are insane some of them just are people looking for some kind of political advantage so I think that is a caveat that you must consider as you move forward with your investments Uh, now Biden has done a good job uh, in what he's proposed and gotten passed Biden, on the other hand, uh, has been very slow, uh, courtesy of his uh, attorney general, to address these people who basically are calling for the end of democracy. And, you know, these shouts from the rooftops, eventually they'll get loud enough so that people in corporate boardrooms are going to say, well, what do we do here in terms of our business? The last thing you want is for the corporations to go inward and say, you know, uh, the, the, those tw- that 20 million we got going to do in this new product, let's put 20 million in security around the building and for our people. Now that might seem to be extreme, but I thought the insurrection in oh and January 6th was pretty extreme. So again, I don't, I really don't anticipate that we're going to see such terrible things because I have faith in the country and I have faith in the people running the country currently. Uh, But it is really something we should be aware of. Bottom line, if we can get ourselves together uh, and move together as a people, not as a party, not as everybody has the same idea, but just as people who are good citizens, uh, we're going to be okay. On that note, I'd like to point out to everybody, there's a man named Matthew Dowd, 
and he comes from Texas, and he's a Republican, has been a Republican advisor for a long time. He's going to run in, uh, as a Republican in Texas. However, the man basically has been criticizing his old party and, and espousing a view of some of what I'm saying in terms of people must come together. We have to get rid of this insanity that this group is right, that group is wrong, and boy, if, if, if you're on the wrong side of it, I'm going to punch you in the nose. That We have to get rid of that because there's a lot of work to be done, not just going forward competing in the world, but we need to have this attitude to help our young people grow into a more sensible approach to the way they live their lives. Uh, not that they have to go into any big business or do this or be an artist, but that they have a sense of themselves that I can go and do this. I have the support of my fellow man in terms of we're all trying to do the same thing. Used to be that way in the country. We saw it several times, uh, certainly at, at the end of World War uh, II. So uh, we, we've just got to get back to that. All right. Well, Jim, guess what? We're out of time. I don't believe it. <laughs> I might have a, a lawyer here. I, I need right. to sue for more time. All right. Well, get that lawyer and I'll speak to you next week. Go ahead and go Giants. Yes, please. <laughs> Yeah. Take care. Uh, Jim Lynch and cover your assets this morning here on Robin Hood Radio.